Good day. Uh, today we're going to look at the solution to question F. Draw the half plane 3x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 6. And this is on page uh, 99 of your student book. So let's have a look at this problem. How do we go about sketching this half plane? Well, as you can see right here, the inequality greater than or equal to is the sign. So we know it's an inequality, so we know it describes a region called a half plane. But in order to graph it, the first thing we have to do is find a boundary line or graph the boundary line. So let's look at graphing the boundary line. And that's done by finding the slope and y-intercept of the inequality. Okay, um, so we'll take 3x minus 2y is greater than or equal to 6 and isolate the y value finding the slope and y-intercept. So I have negative 2y left on the left-hand side, moving the 3x to the other side, or subtracting 3x from both sides. I get the following. Uh, that means I have to divide by uh, the coefficient of y, which is negative 2, to determine, right, determine the actual slope and y-intercept. Now dividing each term by negative 2 gives me this. Now there's a rule in inequalities, and anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must switch the inequality. So as you can see, we're dividing each part of this equation by negative 2. So when you divide every term through by a negative sign, as you can see, all negative 2's, then the inequality must change. So it reverses its order. So instead of greater than or equal to, it becomes less than or equal to. So do not forget. That's only if you're dividing or multiplying by a negative number do you switch the inequality. Now negative 3 over negative 2 switches to positive 3 over 2x and then uh, positive 6 divided by negative 2 is minus 3. So just like we did with a linear function, the line, we knew that the coefficient of the x term when, when y is isolated is the slope. So the slope here is 3 over 2. My y-intercept here is negative 3. So these, this is describing your boundary line. Okay, now, so the first thing you do is plot the boundary line. So we'll find the starting point when you're plotting is the y-intercept. So we'll start here with this point. Now the y-intercept, of course, means a point on the y-axis. So we find negative 3 on the y-axis. There it is right there. Label your point. And from that point, we're going to use a slope of 3 over 2. So our slope is 3 over 2. So that means our rise is 3, and our run is 2, and it's positive. So we go up to the right. So rise 1, 2, 3, run 1, 2. So there's our other point. Now, we sketch our boundary line, but before you sketch your boundary line, determine if it's a broken or dotted line or if it's a solid line. Now, if we look at our inequality sign, we can tell that there's an equal sign as part of it, so it's less than or equal to, I'm looking right here, and because of that equal part, the it's a solid boundary line. So this tells us we have a solid boundary line. Okay, If it was simply less than or greater than with no equal sign, our line would be broken. So I'll draw a solid boundary line now through those two points. So let's see. Oops, I missed it there. Let me see if I can move that. There we go. So there's your line. Now, the question comes for us I'll just extend that up a little bit. Which half plane do I shade? Okay, now it divides it into two half planes. So the question is, do I shade above, all right, which is right here? Do I, 
right? Do I shade above right here? Is that the half plane or do I shade below, which is this area here? So which half plane do I shade? That's the question. Again, you must look at your inequality to determine that. And the inequality sign, I'm going back to the one I changed because we changed it. Our inequality sign is less than or equal to. Now, if that's an oblique line, which this one is, an oblique line is a slanted line. If it's less than, that means we shade below, right, the line. So the less than part tells us we shade below. The equal part tells us it's a solid boundary line. So then we simply, okay, shade below the line and in that area. So let's say if I shade below, I'm shading all this area right here. Okay? Now you don't actually have to color it. You can use arrowheads, whatever you choose. Some people color it like this. Okay? Um, other people use arrowheads like this. Okay, just just point arrowheads in the direction in that it's and it's up to you which you prefer to shade the whole thing or use arrowheads or so this describes this half plane right here. Okay? And again you could shade it or arrowhead. So now what you should do, because inequalities often change signs depending, and sometimes we forget to do change the sign, a nice thing to do is check your work. And the way to check the work here, of course, is using a test point. Okay, Pick a test point in the area and put it back in the original equation. So what's my test point? Well, I usually pick something that is on the y-axis or on the x-axis that's in my shaded area. So I'm going to choose this point right here. That's in my shaded area. And the coordinates of that point are, of course, x coordinates 5 and the y coordinate 0. So I treat that as x and y, and I'm going to substitute it back into the original equation. And you always want to go back to the original equation because you changed the inequality sign. And therefore, it's safer to put it back into the original to see if it's a true statement. So 3 times 5 minus 2 times 0 should be, according to this, greater than or equal to 6. So let's see if that's a true statement. 15 minus 0, is that greater than or equal to 6? Yes, indeed. This is a true statement. Therefore, you know you have the correct area shaded. And that's the solution to uh, question F on page 99.